After launching three of my own consulting businesses and helping hundreds of clients launch theirs, I can tell you learning how to start a consulting business on the side can generate you thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the five things you need to know if you're gonna start a consulting business on the side. It is a very, very lucrative space to enter and it's a really good business to start, but you have to know how to do it correctly. The first thing you need to ask is what have you succeeded in that others would pay for? Consulting is about selling your success to others. That's really what consulting is. It's selling your experience, your success to others so they can replicate your success. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of consultants are teaching theory, but stuff they haven't really done. And I'm gonna tell you, you can still be a consultant, but make sure you're teaching things you've actually accomplished and had success inside of. My very first consulting business I started, I was teaching speakers how to get booked to speak. And the reason I was teaching speakers how to get booked to speak, I had been a traveling speaker for about five years and I was speaking more than most people I knew. I had learned how to really get coordinators to book me over other speakers and especially how to increase my rebooking rate. Increasing your rebooking rate is a really big thing for a speaker because once you get a client, getting them to book you over and over and over again is really important. Well, in the market I was in, it was really, really hard to make that happen until I found a system, a very disciplined marketing system to get rebooked. So I started teaching that to other people. And that is what you want to do. You want to take something you succeeded in and that's where you want to start your consulting business. The second thing you want to do is do revenue analysis. What are consultants charging in your industry? In your revenue analysis, make sure your competitors are charging enough to make it worth it for you to enter that space and teach people how to do that. If you learn that you want to teach gardening but people in that space are charging $97 for an online product and they're really not teaching one-on-one -on -one coaching where you can really scale a business, then don't really go into that industry. When you start a consulting business, one of the mistakes people make is they think they need to be cheaper. They think one of the things they need to do is charge less money than their competitors and that's why people will choose them. Do not start by charging less. In fact, if I was to tell you I had a Ferrari in my garage and you could have it for $2,500, what would you say to me? What's wrong with it? And the idea with cheaply priced consultants is most people believe they'll get cheaply priced service. And so the idea is don't be the cheapest person on the block. You don't have to start off as the most expensive consultant, but you want to have a price that demonstrates you offer real value and you can really help people. And people don't charge really little money for that. So there's really three tiers in pricing in consulting. There's the low, middle, and high. And I want you to be on the higher end of the middle. So if the low is $1,000, the middle is $3,000, and the high is $6,000, I want you to be in that 4,500 range. A little bit higher than the middle of the road. Because here's the deal, everybody tends to gravitate towards the middle. You wanna step off a little bit from them and say, and add value that others aren't adding so you can justify that difference. But the truth is, you don't wanna differentiate yourself based on being cheap. You wanna differentiate yourself based on being good. The third thing you wanna do as you start your consulting business is never charge by the hour. Consultants that charge by the hour have to work way, way more than consultants that charge by the package. So you, instead of charging by the hour, you want to sell consulting packages. Consulting packages you can generate a lot more revenue for instead of charging $100 to $300 per hour. It's really hard to scale an hourly based consulting package unless you bring on more consultants on your team that can be consulting as well and you can upcharge their services and make money on everybody that's helping people. It's really hard on an hourly based service to generate any scale and any real revenue. Before we go on to the next few tips, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We talk a lot on this channel about how to grow your business, how to launch your business, how to invest in real estate, and really how to generate financial freedom. So make sure you subscribe and join our family of entrepreneurs. The fourth thing you need to know is group consulting is the new thing. One-on-one -on -one coaching is kind of dying. Because here's what we all realized, as we were doing one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, which believe me, I used to do this too, as we were doing one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, we were being asked the same question over and over and over again. So I put four clients together and answered all those questions at once, and I just quadrupled the amount of impact and money I could make for the hour I spent. That's how you scale a coaching business. 
create a group coaching model where you coach a bunch of people at once, rather that one-on-one -on -one coaching model, unless you're charging an astronomically high fee, you can really only take so many one-on-one -on -one clients before you run out of time. And if you're gonna take the time to build a business, you might as well take the time to build a business that you can scale and it scales past your time and you can generate more and more revenue no matter how much time you're spending with your clients. Because people still have direct questions in a group setting, you can bring them on Zoom or in person and they can ask that direct question and still have it answered. But what I've realized is by answering that question and often answers it for somebody else. And with group coaching, you still can have a one-on-one -on -one element. Let's say you really love working with people one-on-one, -on -one, then please do it. Because if that's what you love, that's what you're gonna be most passionate about. But also in the one-on-one -on -one element, most group packages can still have a one-on-one -on -one element. Even our group package still gives one one-on-one -on -one call away with me because I can spend a little bit of time with our clients and really get them launched as they come into our program. So our programs still offer a one-on-one -on -one component and yours could too. And the good thing about a one-on-one -on -one component is there's high perceived value in one-on-one -on -one coaching. So that can expand the true value of your offer. So if people are paying you $10,000, you can say, listen, the, one of the reasons it's this expensive is you get some one-on-one -on -one time with me. And my time is very valuable because I can help you really change your life in whatever category you're consulting in. So having a one-on-one -on -one component can add a lot of value to your program. But don't make that the primary way of delivery or you'll hit a ceiling on your income pretty quickly. The fifth tip of building a consulting practice is high ticket is the way to go. You wanna get out of this $47, $97, $297 product based businesses because while you can sell a lot of those, high ticket is where you really scale your revenue. How many $297 offers do you need to sell? to match a $10,000 offer, right? There's a big difference there. You're gonna have to sell, at a $250, you're gonna have to sell 40 of those to every one $10,000 offer. High ticket can help you scale much more further. And so you wanna understand high ticket is definitely the way to go. So however you structure your coaching program, make sure high ticket is certainly an element and I would make it the element. I would not start with a program less than $3,000. $3,000 should be the basement of your offer. Don't go below that. 3,000 is high enough to really feel good scale. If you get two or three of those a month, that's a pretty good income. But you want 3,000 to start creeping up and the goal is to get that $3,000 offer, add enough value and start selling it at 10,000 at least. That's the scale of high ticket programs. They start at 3,000, they scale towards 10, and some high ticket programs are 50, 100, and multiple millions of dollars depending on what they're doing for you. The second thing, if you're offering a service and not just consulting, make sure you understand that you can charge more for that. If you're offering a done for you service where you're running Facebook ads for somebody or you're doing it for them, you can charge more for a DFY, a done for you, versus a done with you program. So a done with you is consulting where I'm showing you how to do it, I'm telling you how to do it, but you're going out and implementing. Now a done for you program, they come to me and I do all the work for them, you can charge a lot more money for DFY programs, but understand, once again, if you do a DFY program and you're doing it for people, you'll hit a ceiling on your time. You'll run out of the amount of time you have to serve clients unless you can scale and start bringing on a team that can help you grow into a DFY service. Now here's some consulting ideas that are already been proven and people are already being paid for. And the reason I wanna give you this list is not only you may find an idea in this list, but it'll also help you see the wide range of consulting that's available. Number one, how to start a business. A lot of people are teaching people how to launch businesses. That consulting world has been proven people will pay for that. How to grow your consulting business how to have a better marriage, how to raise responsible children, how to achieve optimal wealth, and how to achieve optimal health, how to get into real estate. There's leadership consultants, marketing consultants, even systems consultants. Some people come into business and help them see where their systems are weak, and you might think in a process system-based world, and you can help them put systems in place to save them a lot of time. All of these sectors have been proven people will pay for these type of consultants, and maybe you fit into one of these categories. You can essentially start a consulting business around anything. But let me tell you, there's three major categories. And I would encourage you to slide your consulting business into one of these three categories. And it's health, wealth, and relationships. 
That's what people will pay the most money for. They'll pay for their health, their physical health, growing and optimizing their health, growing their finances and all that entails in that and their relationships. There's a lot of coaching around how to have great marriage, how to have great relationships, how to find your significant other because health, wealth and relationships, humans have proven are the three things that we will spend the most money on. One ninja tip to starting a consulting business is leverage affiliate partners. When you launch a consulting business, where do you find your customers? So go to affiliate partners that already have a following. Maybe they have a large YouTube channel. Maybe they have a large podcast and ask them if they would interview you and you can market to their people and anybody that bought your program, they get a piece of it. It's a great way to launch your coaching program without having to spend a lot of ad dollars and without having to spend a lot of money on marketing. I can tell you when I launched my coaching business, teaching people how to get into real estate, that's the first thing I did. Not because I didn't have the marketing dollars because actually I wanted to test the concept. I wanted to make sure people would pay for it. Before I spent lots of money in running Facebook ads and doing online marketing, I wanted to go and test the market and make sure people would pay for this. So I was interviewed by a few of my friends on their podcasts and YouTube channels and I noticed people want to know about this multifamily real estate thing. So then my business started to flourish because not only that, I was able to get testimonials, I was able to get people that said, man, this content is rock solid and then it made it so much easier to sell my product and services to others. Affiliate marketing is one of the most under focused on and underserved areas in business marketing. Because here's the thing, think about an affiliate marketer or somebody who has a following. Those followers trust that person. So when I come to their crowd and they say this person's good, that's borrowed credibility. Part of marketing and getting people to buy your services is having to prove to them you're credible enough to give you money to. But when you do affiliate marketing and you come on somebody else's platform, you can borrow their credibility and borrow the trust those followers have in that host. And then you'll get a lot more people buying your products and services because they already trust the platform that you're on. And I also want to give you a free gift today. I want to give you our free business startup checklist. No matter what kind of consulting business you're going to start, this checklist will make sure you don't miss any important elements as you're building your business. So go into the description and click that link. You're going to be taken to a page where you can snag your copy of our startup business checklist.